hello youtube welcome back to the channel so in today's tutorial we are going to go ahead and create a full stack application using uh first api as the back end and then you're going to be using next.js as the front end so it's just going to be a simple application using first api redix and then you're going to be using next.js for the front end we'll also be using a uh, react bootstrap for the styling of the page so let me just demonstrate to you what you're going to create so we're going to create a simple to-do list application and it's going to look something similar to this okay so i'm just going to go ahead let me just show you how it works let me just add it to do so i'm going to get a second uh to do uh title and i'm just going to add a description i'm going to say uh second uh to do uh get that right to do uh description uh just like that so i'm going to go ahead and create this description uh, create this and it's going to give me a lot and it's something that the tool has been created i can press ok and i can see that to do right here so we have the first to do and you can see it's completed so we have a line through it so like, this is the second to do right here so we can go ahead and click uh completed and this should uh, com uh mark it as completed you can also do uh, uncomplete it if you want you just click on this again and it should uh, be uncompleted again like that just like that you can also go ahead and delete the to do's and stuff like that so i can delete the to do and now you can see the to do doesn't exist and i can also delete this if i want and i can also keep it completed or uncompleted if i want and if it's completed you're going to have a line through it just like this so i'm just going to repeat this one more time so click it in this and you can see the line through it right here and it says that to do a title and the line through it shows that it's completed and i can go ahead and delete this if i want so i can just press on delete and it's going to go ahead and delete that to do so right now we have not no to do left right so this is what you're going to create you're going to be using fast api redis for our database and you're going to be using um uh, we are going to be also using uh, Next.js for the front end. So this for Next.js right here for the form and all the other stuff, front end stuff. So uh, if you're new to the channel, please kindly consider subscribing, liking this video, and sharing this content with anyone who you think might find this helpful. So let's get to it. Yeah, so this is how the front end is going to be all this is the prediction you're going to create and this is how the front end is going to look like. So let me just go into a show how the API is going to look like and you're going to build an API using fast API and the API is going to look like this. So this is the official documentation of the API running on localhost at port 8000 for slash docs. So this is the API that you're going to create. You're going to be using fast API. And if you build API using fast API, fast API provides you by default with this uh sweet uh swagger UI that you can use to test your API and do different things. So you're going to be using this one to uh, to the, to test our api it means you're not going to be you don't need anything like postman or anything uh to test your api but if you want you can go ahead and install postman it's also a good thing to have but you're going to be using swagger you uh swagger the swagger ui that first api provides us by default to test our api so these are different routes for our api uh that is used to create the simple to-do list application right so this is what you're going to be building and if you need the channel please kindly consider subscribing liking this video and sharing this video with anyone who you think might find this helpful so once we have that out of the way let's go ahead and set our environment and begin to code yes guys so the first thing we need to do is actually get fast api installed on our machine so let's go ahead and set up our environment to install fast api so i'm just going to my terminal so these are uh, what the applications were running so this is the front end i'm just going to exit out and i'm also going to go ahead in the next terminal and exit out of the front end a back end application so i'm just clear the terminal and i can close one of these so i can just go back uh go back one directory let me go on my desktop and i'm going to create uh, a new so let me deactivate my current environment so i'm going to say deactivate uh, my current uh, python virtual environment so i'm going to create a uh, uh, file here i'm going to call it first api api uh, redis uh, full stack or oh, let's just get first api redis or oh, let's say first api and let's say to do uh, full stack up just like that so i'm just going to create that application right there so i'm going to change my directory into my uh my full stack uh, app folder so once i have that i'm going to create a virtual environment and to create a virtual environment is quite easy so let's say python 3 and then dash uh dash m v and v and then the name of the virtual environment you're going to call it v e and v so virtual environment or you can call it e and v if you want but i'm going to call mine e and v v and v and this is how you create it on linux and macbook but if you're on windows this is not going to work for you so uh, the command for windows might be a bit different so just take some time and do a quick research on you on the google to see the command to create it for windows it's very similar to this one but has a bit of trick to it so make sure that you have the virtual environment created and if you're on windows user uh you can go ahead and search it on google is quite very simple and if you don't want to create a virtual environment feel free to skip this step okay so once i have my virtual environment created i'm going to activate it so it's the to activate it source vnv first slash bin first slash activate so for windows the command to activate again is a bit different so make sure that you do a quick research google uh, and then find the command to activate 
activate and act, uh, to make to to create and activate your virtual environment on Windows. So great. So once we have the virtual environment created, we're going to be using Fast API for our back end. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go to fastapi.tiangolo.com. I hope that's how we pronounce it. So I'm going to go ahead and install Fast API. So I'm going to copy this command right here. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and install Fast API. So I'm going to go ahead. Let me just make this a bit bigger so that you guys can see. So I'm going to paste this right here to install Fast API. So I'm going to paste that right there. And I also need uh, to install the UVCon, UVCon server. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this as well. And I'm also going to go ahead and install the UVCon server. So once this is done, I want to install also UVCon. So uh, make sure that you have uh, that the, that also installed okay okay so once i have that i'm going to go ahead and install uvcon as well so once those are loading that's all i need and uh, you also need to have a redis account okay you, you have to have a redis cloud account because it's what you're going to be using to create our redis cloud you're not going to be installing redis locally on a machine you're going to be using a redis uh, cloud database in the cloud so make sure that you go to RedisCloud.com, redis clouds and then you just bring you to this page and then click on the on the google side that you sign in or use your github or use your google okay uh let me just go back i'll work i'll come back to redis just in a second so i also need to install uh redis uh ai uh, ai or redis okay this application this uh, is a library that uh, we can use to work with redis uh, which allows us to use a synchronous uh to do a synchronous programming okay so make sure that you have a ao uh, ai or redis installed so this is the command to install it pip install a ai or redis okay so this is going to allow us to have some functionality like performing a synchronous uh synchronous request okay so i'm just going to go ahead and paste this right here and get that also installed so once uh, we have all that installed, let's wait for this to complete installation. Also, you need to have Redis installed. So let's say pip uh, install uh, Redis, just like that. And this is also going to go ahead and install for us Redis on our machine. So let's just wait for that to get installed. And once that's all is installed, we can begin to code. So before we, be, we begin, let's go back to Redis Cloud and then make sure that you, you either sign up. Uh, but I already have uh, an account, so I'm going to sign in with my Google, uh, Google account. And uh, once I am signed in, I already have a database already created. Uh, so this is my database, right? And you're going to use this database. So I'm going to use show you my credentials, but after this video, I'm going to delete this database so you guys won't have access to these credentials. So make sure that you create your own uh, cre database credentials because if you use mine, uh, then it's not going to work for you, okay? So once I have that done, I can just simply go ahead and simply copy this. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to go uh, in here. Uh, let's just make sure that this is done. So once this, we have this done, I'm just going to clear the terminal right here. And I'm simply going to go ahead and make a directory. I'm going to call it app. Okay. So we have this in our directory right now. So I'm going to change that. I'm just going to open this uh, in Visual Studio Code. Or feel free to use any editor that you're comfortable using. I'm going to be using VS Code because I'm comfortable using VS Code. You can use Sublime or any other editor that you're comfortable using. So once I, I have that done, what I simply want to do here is simply go ahead and create the structure of our application. So let's wait for VS Code to open up. Yeah, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to close this. I don't need it anymore. I don't also need any this anymore, just like that. So yeah, so once I have that done, I'm going to go into my VS code and my VS code, I'm going to go into my app and I'm going to create a folder called, uh, uh, this folder should be called uh, routes. So it's going to be route, routers, sorry, my routers, routers, just like that. And I'm also going to create a file called uh, main.py. So in my app, I'm going to create a file and the file is going to be called main.py. So I'm going to say main.py, just like this. And I'm also going to be creating another one called models.py. We're going to keep our database, uh, our, our database models. Okay. So let's just wait for this. this is a bit slow. Let's just wait for this to get complicated, uh, to get, uh, to get uh, done. So once it's done, I'm going to create another file. I'm going to call this one uh, models.py, just like that. So we have our models.py, our main.py, and our routers right here. So let's get started. So the first thing we are going to go ahead and do is go into our our main.py file and set up some basic configurations right there so uh, we're going to go ahead and create our application right here so i'm going to go in here and say from uh first uh first api import uh first api just like that from first api and i also go on to go ahead and say uh from uh first api dot middle uh middle uh middleware dot course import uh import the the course middleware so the course middleware course import uh this is going to be the course let me just uh, course uh middle so the course middle 
uh, middle wear so this will middle wear and this is going to us on our on our brother so that we don't have to suffer from any issues related with cause and stuff like that because we're going to be make using our front end to make requests we're going to be make using our front end to make requests to this back end so we're going to enable calls so i'm going to say our app and the app is simply going to be a first uh, api okay an instance of the first api that we just imported right here so once i have that created i'm going to go ahead and add the course configuration so that we can uh, we can have the course added so i'm just going to say app dot add uh dot add underscore um middleware and i'm simply going to add the middleware the first one is going to be course so it's going to be course uh middleware and then i'm going to go ahead and say allow uh allow underscore uh origins uh, allow origins and the R allow origins is going to be a list so it's going to be a list and i'm simply going to pass in all origins okay we are going to allow any origin to make so this can be a list rather it's going to be uh just an asterisk in here so it's going to allow all all the all origins to make a request to this so i'm also going to say allow uh underscore creden credentials and allow credentials is going to be uh equals to uh true let's say that to be true and then you're going to say allow uh allow allow underscore methods uh, methods and this is going to be a list again you're going to say asterisk to allow any of those methods to make access to our api so allow underscore headers and then you can say uh you can leave that to be uh, a list and then you could simply pass in an asterisk here, right here so here and then an asterisk so we have allow origins we have allow uh, credentials and then we have allow methods so methods and then you have allow headers okay this is a headers right here so once i have that done that's all i need to do to set up my api my my course application so let me check here i think i have an error uh so uh allow cause it tells me that it wasn't close okay i can just skip here uh that doesn't solve it so let me just see um, uh app dot middleware and then let me just copy all this out and try to see what's the problem here yeah and that's it and i'm going to paste this right here and it tells me uh this wasn't close so we have the course we have the origin we have the allow origins and then uh, credentials and then the this one and then that one yeah that's all we need so uh so for now we just leave that for now let's go and, and i will come back to this and see why it says that it was not close method add origin uh type uh, so it says that it wasn't close. So we'll come back to this just in a second. But for now, let's go on to uh, another part of the application. So we're going to go into our our. This is sorry. This is going to be in our main.py. So I I did this wrong. So I'm going to copy this and uh, move it into main.py. So my bad for that. So once I have it there, I'm going to go into my routes here, and I'm going to go into my routes and create a routes here. So this route is going to be simply called uh, to dos. Okay. So I'm going to create a file called to dos here. So I'm going to say to dos.py and instead of my to do's part, this we are going to keep all our configurations okay so first before we begin to create our our our, our to do's we first need to set up a database to store in those to do's right so let's go back into our models.py file in our models.py file we can write the, the the database configurations in here so i'm just going to go here and say from a uh, o i redis i'm going to go ahead and import uh get underscore redis underscore connection just like that so i'm going to get the redis connection and i'm also going to get a uh, hash uh, hash model uh, hash model from here so once i have that done uh, this is actually just not be uh, this is going to be just like this uh, this right here so from a redis uh, a redis underscore om so a redis underscore om i'm going to go ahead and uh, import that so uh, so once i have that there i'm also going to go ahead and import uh yeah that's all we need for now i'm just going to keep all that that's all we need so let's go ahead and create a database i'm going to call this one redis and this is going to be get uh underscore redis connection uh, redis connection and in here i'm going to go ahead and pass in the the the, the, the configurations of from our out our credentials from our redis uh, cloud api so i'm just going to go in here and just simply copy this right here and this is going to be our endpoint so this will simply say host so i'm going to say host and the host is going to be the following so i'm just going to paste this in here now for the, this is going to be actually going to be a string so i'm going to put this in the quotes and then simply paste this in here we don't need the api so uh, we don't need the port of this so i'm going to cut cut the port and then also need to go ahead and specify uh i'm going to go ahead and specify the following so i'm going to go ahead and specify the port so i'm going to say port 
and the port is going to be uh, this right the port I just copied from the the URL here and I'm also going to go ahead and specify my password so the password is going to be different from each person so don't use my password uh, details because I'm going to shut down that ready server once I'm done recording this video so I'm going to go down here and let's get the password so I'm going to copy the password and simply go in here and simply paste it in here and then I want to go ahead and specify the decoded decoded uh, underscore uh, responses recorded responses and this is going to go ahead and set this to be true so this is going to be a string in fact let me keep this in sorry um, keep this in double quotes right there so now once we have this done i'm just simply going to go ahead and uh, create my, my model so i'm going to say go ahead and simply say uh sorry go ahead here and simply say class i'm going to have a class and this is going to be called class to do and it's going to inherit from the hash model so in this class we're going to pu put in the the description of our data of our data of our schema basically this is going to be the schema so we're going to have title and it's going to be of type uh, string uh, we're going to ha go ahead and uh, have the description so the description and the description is also going to be of type string and you're going to go ahead and co have completed uh, completed and this is going to be of type a boolean right either a true or a false or bool uh, and then uh, that's all and then for uh, we're also going to have the time when the to do was created and for now you have to leave the time to be a string uh, once you have that you're going to have a, an inner class and it's going to be called meta class and this meta class we're going to say database uh, database database to use is going to be the redis uh, redis database that we just created which is right here the, the redis connection that we got so yeah so that's all we need to set up our model so everything now is set up so let's go ahead and see uh, and go into our um, our, to, our routes and then go into our to do so from in here we're going to go ahead and import that database and begin to use it so uh instead of our to do dot py our to do's dot py i called it to do's right so instead of our to do's dot py we're going to go ahead and import of our api router from first api so let's say from our first api right i want to import the api uh, api router uh, let me just get that right api router i'm also going to go ahead and yeah for now i'm just going to import the api router so let me import that api router and uh, this is going to be from get okay, the spelling right so from first api import the api router and i'm also going to import the model so i'm going to say from dot dot models i'm going to import uh, the to do uh yeah and then i'm going to also import the uh, uh, uh and yeah that's all i need for now so now that we have that i'm simply going to go ahead and create the router here so i'm going to say uh router and the router is going to be the api uh, router an instance of it so in here you can keep different tags for it so i'm going to go ahead and say tags and the tags is going to be the following so i'm going to keep the to do here i'm going to say to do's okay okay so once we have that the uh, once we have that done so I'm, I, I can just go ahead and uh, uh i can go ahead and actually get uh first of all let's go ahead and create a to do and then later we'll retrieve all the to do's so let's make a function that is going to create those to do's for us so uh to do that is very simple so i have to say at uh, at router dot um out router dot post we're going to use the post method because uh, we're going to be sending requests to the server right so at router dot post the, that's, the, that's the url and then you're going to say status underscore code and this is going to be uh, we can specify the status code if you want so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to import the http uh http uh i can i just i just didn't import status not the hp so i'm going to say status just like that so it's going to be a uh, uh, status dot uh, http and this is going to be uh 201 which is that it has been created right so into the function is uh, going to be an asynchronous function async and this is going to be dev and it's going to be create uh underscore to do just like this and to create this to do we're going to pass in the uh, the to do com uh, the to do details that you want to create so the to do and it's going to be of type the to do that we just uh the, the schema of the to do okay so once i have that uh, simple to create the to do so i'm going to say to do uh to do dot uh, completed I'm, I'm going to say the to do completed is going to be an integer of uh to do dot completed so i'm trying to i tried to store a boolean inside of the redis uh database and i was getting some error so i had to convert the boolean first into an integer or a float and then be able to store it in there that's why we are doing this part right here so it's a new underscore to do and the new to do is going to be the following so it's going to be uh i'm going to await this process because it's going to create this so it's going to be to do uh the to do dot uh save right here so once we have that to do save we can just return uh we can return the new underscore to do right here 
yeah so that's all we need to create it simple to do so i'm going to go back and make sure that this is working and then we'll come back to create the other ones for the get the update and the delete functionality so i'm going to go into my main here and i'm going to go ahead and import it so i'm going to say uh i'm going to go into my main and i'm going to simply go ahead and say i'm um, import that uh, router so i'm going to say from uh routers so i'm going to get from routers um it is right from routers import uh import uh we call that uh, let me just go and see we called it uh we're just going to go ahead and import the to do's right here to do's and to do's is uh, this file right here so from routers you're going to import the to do's uh, right here so this is our main so once you have that then i can just go below this uh, uh course setting and i can just simply just go ahead i think you get an error here so from first api import this and i also want to import yeah guys i think you're getting an error because i forgot to import this one right here so uh, if i forget to import that so getting uh, first api dot middleware dot calls uh, we're going to go ahead and import the course middleware so we have that imported right there so once we have that imported right there we can just go ahead and uh, do the other setup that we want yeah so i'm um, just going to go in down here and then down here i'm simply going to go ahead and say app dot include uh, router and i'm really going to say to do dot uh, router right and to do dot router to do so call it to do so if, uh, to do so if you go into our to do file uh, which is this one we are talking about this router and this router is what handles this all these uh, calls so i don't know why we are still having this error right here but uh, let me see why we're getting there so we added the course middleware the course middleware we added the allowed origins and the allow origins is just going to be a list and then we added the allow credentials and the credentials is true and then methods is uh this methods and then uh uh headers is that over there so we have all that information done uh, all that setup i don't know why we're getting this error and the error says uh let me just hover on this and see so here it says uh dash was not closed method include middleware it wasn't closed uh, but this is strange we close it right here so let me just try to keep this uh, we still have that error so let's uh, just ignore that error for now and uh, let's go back in the, let's go into our, our uh, terminal and let's run the application so i'm just going to say uh, uvcon uh, uvcon and then app dot main so app dot main and then app and then hyphen hyphen reload and then just run that so let's see if the server is going to run and if you get any errors uh, we'll try to solve those errors so we have an error here it says allow method so let's go uh and see so okay i forgot the comma right here so my bad that was the cause for that error so great so once we have that figured out maybe you guys actually spotted it out so um no module uh, no module called router so let me just go in here and see why we are getting that error so it says no module called routers and routers is this right here so it says no module called routers and let's see what we did wrong here and try to solve that error so i just what i simply need to do is to keep here a full stop just to uh, do that import okay so sorry for that now this uh, reloads and uh, we can see we don't have this library right here i think i made a mistake when installing the redis library so i'm going to go exit out and then let me go and install that library right there so yeah hello guys welcome back so I, I actually found that i made an error when installing my library so i actually went ahead and fixed it i did a quick google search and i fixed the error so the first thing we need to do we actually need to have uh ready uh this installed so make sure that you have this installed copy this and then make sure that you have this installed on your machine and once you have this installed on your machine you also need to install the redis om so just have to say pip uh install uh the redis uh, hyphen om okay so install this as well so this we need to have these two libraries installed along with the ones that we installed for this to work so great so once we have all that that i also did identify i have another another error right this is actually decode uh, responses and not decoded responses so decode responses and that should be true so once i have all that uh, error uh, uh, all that error solved so sorry sorry for the error uh just a uh, library installation uh, error so once we have that done i can just simply go ahead and simply do a, uh, a i can say uvicon so uvicon is one of the uh, servers that we installed for running fast api so ap uh, app dot main and then you say app and then we say uh we say app here and then we go ahead and simply do a hyphen hyphen reload and then simply press enter and this is going to start our, our development server on running on localhost at port 8000 so i can just simply copy this so i'm going to copy this and then go up in my terminal so i'm just close this up so I, uh, this was using for uh, for my research or when i was installing the library so i just installed uh gold in here and then simply go ahead and go to first slash docs uh first slash docs so instead of first slash docs we just have that api right here 
so again so we have the swagger ui right here so let's go ahead and try to create a simple uh a simple uh a simple uh to do so i'm just delete the primary key because the primary key we don't actually need to provide the primary key so i'm just going to delete it so sometimes we don't need to provide the primary key here. delete the primary key and i can just say uh this is going to be simply uh i can just simply pass in here uh first uh to do uh title and this is going to be uh first uh to do uh to do description and this is going to be completed you're going to leave this to be you're going to change this to be false and then the time you can just pass in that a string as a time so we can just use uh we can just say uh today's date is actually uh 28 so 28 of fourth uh of 2020 Okay, I can just do that and again, I can just simply uh, click on execute. So you're going to make a post request and this is going to go ahead and save this in our database and it's going to return to us this information. So great. So now we are able to create our, our to do. So let's go ahead and simply go ahead and create the other functionalities and then we'll end up for this video. So let's go in here and what you want to do right now is to retrieve the post and display the, uh, the post information to the end user. So uh, instead of our to do, uh, instead of our routers and then to do.py. So in there, I'm going to go ahead and create the function to return the given to do's. Uh, different to do's so let me just go ahead and do that so uh, the first we, ne we need to do is to create a to do that uh, write a, a function that is able to get a to do so let's just say uh, get to do right here so what you're simply going to do is just say we're going simply going to say uh, it's going to be uh, uh, we're going to say at uh, router dot uh, this is going to be a get request so get so to get a, a single to do you have to say to do's uh, to go to do's route and then you pass into us the primary key of that to do that you want to retrieve so I'm just going to uh, have an async function right here and it's going to call def and it's going to be get underscore to do and we're going to take in a primary key and it's going to be of stripe uh, string. So once we have that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a try, I'm going to have a try and accept block. So in the try block, we're going to simply return, await, uh, because it's an uh, synchronous function, you can just await on this process and it'll be to do dot get and you pass in the primary key of the to do that you want to get. And that's that, that's all we need to do. In case there's an exception, you just uh, have the accept uh, exception and you're going to have a function, you're going to have uh, an exception called not found error. So we're going to import this from uh, a, 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 a Redis uh, ORM. So I'm going to go ahead and say from a Redis uh, underscore OM, I'm going to go ahead and import no uh not found error not found uh not found error so i'm going to handle that not found error exception here so not found uh error exception and then you're simply going to go ahead and simply um simply ret uh, return a http exception in case of car so we need to also import the http exception so http exception right here and you're going to return the exception right here so we're going to simply say uh return uh just say return and we're going to say http uh, exception and what is going to pass in here we're going to pass in the status uh status uh, underscore code and the status code is going to be uh we can just say a 404 right it is not found so i'm going to simply say is that the status code is going to be a 404 so 404 and then you can pass in details or so details uh details and the details can be anything you can say uh to do uh, let me get it right to do uh not found just like that so yeah that's all we need to uh handle that uh, exception and then return the 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 the, uh, the 404 in case the to do is not found so http exception and you pass in the status code as a 404 and then the detail of that is to do not found so that's all we need so once we have this setup we can simply go ahead and try this out so let's check if our server is running and the server is indeed running so go back to the browser and then i'm just going to copy the the api key uh, sorry the primary key of this i'm going to copy this primary key and then let me just refresh this or the other uh, to show up so we have the get right here and text in a primary key so i'm just going to click on the try and then simply pass in that primary key right here and then just click click uh, click on execute and that should go ahead and return to us that uh, that to do you can see we get the response right here so yeah that functionality works now let, let's write it to do to return all the let's write a story and an endpoint to return all the given to do so let's say get all to do's just like this and uh, to get all the to-dos is going to be very simple uh, we need uh, we need two functions for this to work so i'll just actually write the the endpoint first and this is going to be uh router dot get uh this will be a get method and you go to first slash to do's uh that's all you need to do and then you have to have an uh, async function here and it's going to be get underscore to do's uh this is going to not going to take in any parameters so what is simply going to go in here and do it simply going to go in and say the following so you're going to say to do uh f to do uh, for now we can just actually let's pass this function for now because i thought we need two functions to do uh, to make this work right so i'm going to have an another async function down here and it's going to be get uh, underscore 
underscore all underscore to do's and this is going to take in a primary key so you're going to take in a primary key and the primary key is going to be of, of type string and what this function is going to do is going to get for us that even to do so we're going to say to do uh, to do equals to await and await you're going to simply say uh, await uh, sorry await you're going to say to do dot get and you're going to pass in that primary key so great that's all we need to do and uh, we also need to uh, return the uh, return the form return the data that you want so we say return and then we're going to return an object and this object is going to have the phone so we, uh, the first thing that is going to have is going to have the id of and uh, the id and this is going to be uh to do dot the primary key okay and then you're also going to have the title and this is going to be a uh, title and this is going to be the following so it's going to be uh to do dot uh title and then you're also going to have the description so i'm going to say description and this is going to be uh, to do the description uh, get the spelling right so description and then you're also going to have the 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 completed or not so you can say completed and this is going to be uh, to do dot completed and then i'm also going to go ahead and have the the time okay the time and the time is going to be to do dot time just like that so once we have all of this you can just go back in here and in here you're going to say uh, we're going to say to do so to do and this is going to be a list right you're going to have a list here and you are going to await uh, you're going to let me just keep uh, an underscore for now and you're going to say a uh, sync and then you're going to say for uh for to do uh, for for primary key right for primary key uh, let me get the primary key for primary key in uh for primary key let me get that right for primary key in for primary key in uh to do dot get uh to do uh, actually it's to do dot all primary key so to do uh, underscore uh, all underscore uh, primary keys just like that so this function is going to return to us all the primary keys and it's very important that you keep this uh, for function uh, for loop to be in a way any sync function anything and then you're going to await on this press because it's also uh, any sync function you're going to simply going to call this function right here uh, simply call this function and inside of this one you're going to simply provide in the primary key so you're going to look through and get the, all the primary keys and for each of those primary keys you're going to call this asynchronous function that is going to go ahead and get the to do and pass it into this uh, object uh, which is basically a dictionary and then return to us a dictionary so in JavaScript we call this objects right but in python they're called dictionaries so we're simply going to do that and then at the end we can just simply return the to do that we want so this actually let's call it this uh, to do's because it's more than one to do and then just simply return to do's just like that so great that's all we need to get all the to do so let's go ahead and test that functionality out let's check our story starting yeah it is so go back in here and then let me minimize this and refresh this page we should be able to get back all the to do so um, refresh this page so once it's, uh, it's done refreshing i can just go ahead and go to the do's part uh, and then just click on the try button and then click on execute and this will return to me all the to do so uh, okay i get an error here it's an internal server error so let's look at the error it says to do a sync for required object uh, method not core routine so let's go ahead and see where i've made an error so we're going to go ahead and simply say uh, get all to do's and you're going to await that and this is going to be in a sync for uh for to do for pray for uh pray key in to do okay so we have to also await this process you can also await this if you want so you say await uh await and then yeah that's all we need so i think that that's it uh, that should solve our error but in case we get any error we we'll just come back and fix it but that should solve our error and let's check if the server is running it is and you can go back in here and just try to execute this one more time and let's see what we get this time around so we get back the to do's and which are going to be a list and then uh, each li the list contains a dictionary which is an object right in javascript so yeah, everything works fine so we just had to await this as well because it's, uh, this whole thing is asynchronous so we have to await uh, getting the primary keys and then await calling this function which is a synchronous function that gets the different to do's and then pass them into a dictionary and then returns the dictionary which is stored in this list and then at the end of the day you're going to return a list of dictionaries containing each whereby each dictionary instead of the list is set to do on its own yeah so that's how we can deal with the getting uh, getting functionality now let's go over and see how we can uh, delete a given uh, given a given uh, to do so let's just keep it here and i'm going to call it delete uh, delete uh, to do so let me just follow python conventions and just keep just two lines uh, after that yeah so once i have that i'm going to go ahead and simply do at uh, this is going to be uh, at router dot get this is going to be a delete also at router dot delete uh, delete just like that and to delete something we first need to provide in the router and it's going to be first slash to do's and then first slash we're going to take in a primary key so we're going to take in a primary key or the id whatever you want to call it 
and then uh, we're going to go ahead and actually pass in the status code okay so you're going to pass in uh, the status code if you want this is not compulsory but you can pass in the status underscore code and the status code is going to be status dot um uh, let's see uh, if you delete something it should be a for content not found so we're going to return content not found even here you can decide to add the status code if you want so you can just pass in the status uh, underscore code and it's going to be status uh, status is what we imported right here remember status yeah so let me just go ahead and actually delete this i don't know if yes code sometimes imports this so it's going to be uh, status uh mm -hmm. after 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 getting something it's going to uh, going to turn 200 shows everything was okay yeah so once i have that done, i can just go back the delete functionality and this is going to be in a sync a synchronous function so it's going to be a sync and this is going to be dev and it's going to be delete uh, underscore to do so i'm going to take in a primary key so i'm going to take in a primary key and it's going to be of type a string right so once we have that you can simply go ahead and try to delete the, the delete the uh, delete that uh, given to do so i'm going to say await you can also keep this in a try and accept block so i'm going to say uh try you're going to await this process we're going to say uh to do dot uh, delete so delete you're going to simply pass in that primary key and it to go ahead and delete it in case there's an exception you're going to take that exception like the to do not found uh except uh say not uh, uh found error okay and then you're simply going to say uh, we're going to return a status uh, HTTP status code. So we're going to say HTTP exception, and then you're going to say uh, status uh, status underscore code, and the set code is going to be uh, uh, a, a two or four. The content has not been found. Uh, let me just say four or four, right? Uh, four or four, and then uh, you can pass in the details, and details is going to be the following. So detail is going to be uh, to do not uh, found. Okay to do not found and then just like that so we can just return it in case uh, yeah that's all we're going to do so we're going to try to delete it in case there's any exception uh, like the to do is not found because the only exception that can happen is do not found you can handle other exceptions but you're going to just say the to do is not found and then you're going to return uh, a HCP exception of the not uh, to do not found so I'm going to save that and then check if my server is running yeah my server is running and then I can go back in here so I'm going to copy this primary key right here so copy it and then let me just minimize this and refresh the page to get the delete route so delete is here so i'm going to click on that and i'm going to click on the try one so try and it's going to take, it takes in a primary key i'm going to pass in that primary key and then it's, uh, ex click on execute and that should go ahead and delete it you can see it has been deleted and you got back content this right here so it works fine and the to do has been deleted great so now if i go back and try to get all the to do's we shouldn't get that right so uh, try this out uh, sorry not this i'm going to try out all the to do so this one try out and then execute this we should get back an empty list right here okay great so we have deleted that to do successfully so now let's go ahead and try to see how we can uh, update a to given to do so to update a given to do we need to have it a new to do information and then we update the old ones with the new to do information and then save that back to the database so i'm just going to have here and call it the update uh, update um, update to do okay let me just uh, update to do just like that uh, so in here you're going to have a, a router you can say router dot uh, this is going to be a push request to update and this is going to go to a uh, first slash to do's and then you need to take in a primary key of the to do that you want to update so we're going to take in a primary key right here and then you can just go down here going to say it be in a synchronous function and then uh, update uh, update underscore to do you're going to take in a primary key and the primary key is going to be of type uh, type string and also going to take in a to do which is going to be of type uh, of type to do right here so once i have that done i can simply go ahead let me just close this for now close this up so uh, i can simply go ahead and uh, uh, keep this in a try and accept block so i'm going to say try so in this try block what you're going to do we're going to say old uh, underscore to do and the old to do is going to say await uh, we're going to await on this process to get that the old to do so await i'm going to say uh, to do dot get and then you pass in that primary key okay so in case there's uh, the two doesn't ex exist we can handle that exception right so we're going to say uh, exception uh, exception right here so exception uh, not not found uh, not found uh, not found error so not uh, found error this exception and then you can simply say you can return a uh, status code for that so exception in a second for exception and this is not found exception you're going to return a uh, http uh, exception so we're going to return a http exception and the status code is going to be a 404 so status code is going to be a 404 and then um we're going to have a 404 and you're going to pass in the details uh the detail and the detail is going to be the following uh to do not found okay just in case you provide an, an id doesn't exist and it's returned the to do not found 
so once i have that i can simply go ahead i can simply do old uh old to do old underscore to do uh, dot uh all to do dot title and this is going to be the, the new to do so to do dot uh to do dot uh title so the new to do is what we get here and you're just going to say it's title okay uh i don't know why we still get an error here it says that uh try statement must have at least one exception of uh exception so except so this actually except not exception so my bad sorry for that so we have that right there uh and then we can also do old underscore to do dot uh we can say the description so description is going to be uh to do dot description just like that and i can have uh old underscore to do dot uh all to do dot uh, completed and this is going to be to do dot completed just like that so uh, once i have all that information but remember that you have to change this back into an integer because uh already is complaints if i try to save a python boolean inside of the uh, of uh, already so let's have to convert this into a boolean of uh, uh, an integer rather so once i have that I've updated the description the 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 title the description and whether it's completed or not you can't update the time because uh the time is when you created that to do right so if you want to update the time feel free to go ahead and do it but in this uh, tutorial i'm not going to update the time so you just say to do dot uh, save you're going to await on this to save and then you simply return uh all to do underscore to do just like that yeah so that's all we need to do so that's all we need to do for the updates functionality to work because we didn't get it to do update the title the description the completed and then the the and then save it to database after it's saved and then we can just simply return that given to do so uh, let me just go ahead and check if my server is running yeah it is so let's go here and try to uh, create a new to do so let me just minimize this for now and i want to go ahead and refresh this page uh, and once it's refreshed, I can go ahead and uh, post a new to do. So post, and I can simply try this out. So I don't need the primary key, so I can delete that part out. I don't need the primary key, so delete it out. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be first to do uh, title, and this is going to be uh, first to do description, and then you can leave this to be uh, false, and this is going to be the string. You can say uh, this is twentieth of uh, zero four uh call 2022 and i can just go ahead and simply execute this so this is going to create that to do for us and we have the to do created right here so it's the primary key of that to do so i'm going to copy it and then i can minimize all of this so i can simply go ahead and uh, go to uh, get all the to do so if i go and get all the to do's i can just simply uh, try this out and then execute this it's going to return to me all the given to do so i can get back all the to do in this case you have just one to do so that works fine and you can go ahead and get a given to do so i can just try this out so i can just click on try and then pass in that primary key I copied and then execute this so you get back that given to do which is this one right here and that also works fine so let's go into the put function and then just try this out so try this out and i can just pass in the primary key right here i don't need the i don't need to pass in the primary key so i'm just going to delete that to do uh, and then pass in updated sorry my bad this is updated uh, updated title and this is going to be description is going to be updated uh, description and then the, it's going to be true and then the time we can just leave that time out uh, you don't really need to provide the time so you can leave the time out and you can say you have completed because pre previously it was false right so i'm going to execute this and uh, okay we got back an error here so okay let me see we don't need uh, actually this right here so i can go ahead and execute this so it still gets an error says an unpressable entity accepting body name including double quotes uh so i have an error right here so the the title uh the completed so let me see where the error is so it says yeah there's only getting an error because uh, i have i left a command right there so uh sorry for that so i'm just going to go ahead and execute this one more time and we still get an error so i need to provide in the time okay the time field is required so i can just provide in the time but the time will never be used okay so i can just go ahead and say uh the following so i can provide in the time here so i can just say uh com time and then we can uh, say this okay let's say that anytime we want but this time will, nev will never be used because we're not updating the time information so this is going to be uh 20 of uh, uh zero four of uh 20 uh, 20 uh 2022 20, and then let's go ahead and uh, try to execute that so let me just close the string right here the, the double quotes uh 
So this is going to go, go ahead and update it and you can see uh, updated title and updated de description, all that information. So as you can update it, uh, you can customize this so you can create another schema whereby you don't you don't require the time. But uh, this tutorial is going to keep things simple. We're just going to use the same schema. But if you want, you can create another schema right here. So you can go into your models, you can create another schema. And you, in that schema, you don't have to pass in the time, okay? So in that tool, or you can use that schema right here uh, when trying to update a given uh, to do right here. Okay, yeah, so that's all we want, and uh, yeah, that's uh, all we need to do. So, if every functionality works, okay, let's try the delete functionality uh, just to make sure it also works. So, you can try this out and then simply pass in that primary key here and then execute this. Now, this should go ahead and delete that, and you can see now it's deleted. So, if I go ahead and try to get all the to do's. Mm, execute this now you should see we should get back and just an empty list right here so every every of the functionality works so that's all for the back end uh and back end functionality so we have been able to write the crowd functionality the creating the retrieving the updating and the deleting functionality so in the next tool, we're going to go ahead and write the front end it's going to be in next js control uh which is what the end user is going to see right so guys thanks for watching and if you're new to the channel kindly consider subscribing liking this video and sharing this content with anyone who you think might find this helpful so thanks for watching and uh See you in the next one.